If you're interested in getting into what I do with bones, fleshing out roadkill and things like that, but you are unfortunate enough to live very far from a rural area, you're trapped in the city, you got a tiny apartment, you have a house with a minuscule postage stamp lot where you barely have room to plant a bed of flowers and you feel that it's just hopeless, that you'll never be able to do this, then don't fear, this video is going to help you. I'm going to show you today how you can collect small roadkill animals or if you buy feeder rats from the pet store that you can also flesh out small animals outside of your doorstep. You can put this on your doorstep and your nosy neighbors are not going to smell anything, they're not going to see anything. Nobody except you is going to know that this is a contraption for defleshing a body. So I'm going to show you how to do this today very cheaply using two flower pots. You can get these at the Dollarama store, whatever discount store you have, or even if you want to go a more expensive route or you don't have a dollar store, you can get them at a home hardware store or any building supply store, any garden center for cheap. This here cost me three dollars through these two pots. So I'm going to show you how you can turn those two flower pots into a very successful fleshing device for small animals. So for materials, pretty much you just need two flower pots, one slightly smaller than the other. Now the reason for this is, and when you're picking out flower pots, keep this in mind, that you want your smaller pot to sit on top of the other one like this so that it will look like this when you're done. Now for filler, what we're going to use is some gravel or grit. You can use stuff off the side of the road, it doesn't matter. For this I just happen to have some old aquarium gravel, so that's what I'm using. I'm going to be sifting out my marbles though. And there's no real rules to this. You can just fill it up as much as you feel you want to have grit. Now the reason why this is important is that you need proper drainage. Because if you don't have drainage, the water is going to fill up and your body is just going to turn to a slimy, sludgy mess and there's going to be not a lot of decomposition happening here. What we want here is we want it to retain moisture, but we also want it to attract flies which lay their eggs, which become maggots, and we're going to be getting those maggots to work for us. So you don't want it too wet or you're going to drown them and that just defeats the purpose. We want to make a really nice, happy environment for them. Then just some topsoil. Again, you can also use dirt. I'm probably only going to put about an inch or two in here. And I'm going to very lightly pack that. Alright, so now we need a dead body. Callie and I found a beautiful little goldfinch this morning on our walk. So I'm going to put him in there, feet and all, even though I do do jewelry with the feet. I'm thinking possibly if this goes well, I can do my first articulation project with bird for this. So I'm going to do him feet and all, just lay him in there, and I'm going to sprinkle a tiny, tiny amount of dirt over top. Just so that there's a little moisture. But you don't want to bury him enough that he doesn't cause some odor because it's that odor that attracts the flies. So this is what the inside of our flower pot flesher is looking like. And then it's really simple. You just put the top on. Now, my only concern about having the top on like this is the flies. 
they will and can fit through this hole here. But I am unsure if they're going to be able to get back out because this is almost like a bell shape. Theoretically, they should be able to find their way back out because it is very dark on the inside of the pot and there's light through here, so they should be able to just follow the light. But what I'm going to do is, instead of leaving it like this, I'm going to tilt it just a tiny bit so you have a small space here. That space is big enough to accommodate a fly so that they're not going to get trapped in there because it's very important that the flies that are going in to lay their eggs are going to be able to get back out because they're going to be going numerous bodies decomposing different animals, different plants. They're so important to the cycle of life that we do not want to trap them in here and kill them. We want They're our friends and they work for us so without the flies laying the eggs which turn into maggots that eat our bodies, we're not going to be able to do what we do. So we have to be really good to our fly friends. And so we're just going to tilt this just like that to allow a little space for them to, they can go in or out of this hole, they can go in and out of this crack here. They're going to be happy little decomposers. And the good thing is that with this crack here, when our maggots metamorphosize into flies, they can easily get out of there because there's not going to be any food for them in there. There's not going to be anywhere for them to lay their eggs. So they have to be able to get out, fly away, and find other bodies to lay their eggs in. So where are we going to put this? We could put this right by the door. You could even put this on your step and just imagine a whole row of those, one on every step, painted different colors and looking really nice and attractive. We could hide this under the stairs. We could put this under a decorative shrub. Personally, I like the idea of putting my small flesher underneath this peony in the front yard. As you can see, when it's under a bush, you're not really going to notice it. And if you paint that green, most people walking by, they're not going to see that whatsoever. You can even paint it to look like a little gnome or whatever you want. But this is where I'm going to put mine. 